Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. Okay, so again, what is a truth table? It's just a list of all the possible scenarios for the compound statement. So whenever we're doing truth tables and we have a statement that has only two components, whether they're called P and Q or R and S or whatever they're called, and no matter how many times those two components appear in the statement, like possibly the compound statement could be P and Q or not P, there are only two components in this statement, P and Q. And when that's the case, there are exactly these four scenarios, true, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. So you're always going to start when you have two components in your statements with setting up the truth table in this way. Okay, now then you have to... Um, decide on the headings that go along the top of the truth table. So for example, if we wanted to construct a truth table for P or not Q, first of all, you're gonna need a column for each component, the P and the Q, as we saw in the previous slide. But then you're also gonna need a column where you analyze each of the connectives applying the rule for and, or, or negation, depending on which one you're analyzing. Just as we did when we worked out the problems in your groups, you're gonna start with the negations of individual statements, and then you're gonna end with the whole statement, and then sometimes you'll need columns in between. So let's look at for P or not Q, starting with that standard form of a two component statement, P is true or true or false or false. Q is true, false, true, false. Then in the third column, I've labeled with a three, which of the connectives in this statement, P or not Q, should I analyze next? Should I analyze the or or the negation? Negation. Yes, negation of individual components comes first. So the next column, column three, we're going to fill in with negation Q because we would focus in on that on that statement first. And then there's only one connective left to analyze, that's the or. So that means that this last, we're at the last column. This last column, we would analyze the or. Okay, so here's how we do the analysis. We look at the column that we want to fill in. So you go from left to right. We've already filled in one and two. Those are always the same. For column three now, we want to know what's the truth value of the negation of Q. Well, look at Q. We want the opposite of Q. So we're actually going to use column two to get column three. So what do you think would be the truth values in column three? False would be the first one. And then what would be the next one? And then a true, good. And then a false and then a true, good. So you would get false, true, false, true. And why? Because each of these is the negation of the previous column. You see where I'm getting that? Okay, so now we need to find P or not Q. And you're always gonna use either one or possibly two of the previous columns to get the next column. So for column four, we need to compare P and its truth values to negation of Q. And we're joining them with the rule for or, which is only false if both are false. But we have to know the truth values of P and not Q first before we can do that. So which columns would we use? Which columns are we gonna have to look at to know the truth values for P and for not Q? Very good, columns one and three. So we're gonna use one and three together with the rule for or, so looking down columns one and three, here and here, we're gonna think about only false if both are false. So which row, one, two, three, or four, do we have two falses? That's right, this is the only one where we have two falses right here. So that means that's the only place where the or statement's going to be false and the rest are going to be true. Okay, so that's an example of constructing a truth table. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.